Thank you. I'm a Worthing resident. I'd like to ask a question. Who is the competent officer within the Council for the purposes of the EU Electronic Communications Code from a directive, an EU directive, which is retained law in the UK? The directive talks about competent authorities and says the need to ensure that citizens are not exposed to electromagnetic fields at a level harmful to public health is imperative. 5G, which is what this is, is beamforming microwave radiation. So a competent authority must have a competent officer who understands the technical details within the planning applications for these masts. They must understand the IGNERT guidelines and the technical and health aspects of radio frequency electromagnetic radiation. The IGNERT certificate is a self-certification only. It just shows conformance to a standard. It's based on thermal effects on a model of a soldier's head. There has been no independent verification here that the standard will be met, that it will be safe for children or wildlife, or that the influence of other masts in the area will raise the level of radiation above the guidelines. There is no technical data, no diagrams showing the exclusion zone, which is important, no coverage of the area, no data showing the frequency emitted and the attenuation. So without technical information, how can an informed decision be made? The environmental health section is a consultee. And this is the section who should have the technical knowledge to make a sound judgment as to whether these mast applications are safe. I am a qualified environmental health officer who used to work for the council. And I can tell you there is no training in wireless radiation for these officers. The lady who responded on behalf of environmental health used to be in my team and I can confirm has no such training. The National Planning Policy Framework is conflicting. Section 10 conflicts with Section 8, promoting healthy communities. Because of the NPPF, Section 10, councils think they cannot take health concerns into account. But the Public Health England solicitors have stated that it is up to local authorities to determine how much weight to give to the framework, and they must determine also, what other evidence from interested parties to consider in making a decision? And there have been more than 40 interested parties in this case. So where there is a conflict, the health considerations must come first. And the NPPF is guidance, not law. There's a conflict with sustainability because 5G is a huge energy hog. And finally, does the council's insurance policy cover harm from wireless radiation from phone masts that they have approved? If you people wind get up Ill. Now, please, ma I've been a childminder in Worthing for almost 30 years, and I live and work close to the mast. I have two sons of my own and 21 children who come to me for care each week. There are currently five children at Bowhunt who I've cared for from their early years. A huge part of my work is safeguarding. This type of radiation threatens health and safety of us all, but particularly our children. They absorb much, radi much more radiation than adults because their organs and tissues are more absorbent and their skulls are thinner. I've brought studies, which um, I've left over there. Uh, local councils have a duty of care to all constituents. We must examine the potentially serious harm posed by this new technology. To ignore this would be neglectful at best and potentially criminal at worst, especially where there are financial incentives involved. I'd like to draw your attention to a most amassed proposed next to Fishersgate Primary School in May of 2021. Costs of £13,000 were awarded against Brighton and Hove Council in November 2021 because the Council failed to address the health impacts of the proposal and to obtain adequate evidence of the proximity of the mast to the school. Other applications for 5G masts show a minimum of 50 metres exclusion zone around the mast. Another consideration is that when this broadwater mast was originally approved, Bowhunt School wasn't yet built and there was a protective line of trees between the mast and the Northbrook College buildings. This is now gone. I have also brought further evidence that radio frequency radiation affects cognitive function in adolescents, spatial working memory, fine and gross motor skills and attention. This is not conducive to learning. Exposure to these types of radiation is also cumulative. So if a child is exposed all day in the classroom and then goes home to another strongly exposed environment, the effects will be even greater. 
Non-ionizing radiation of this type has also been proven to cause cancer, contribute to fertility issues, hormonal disruption, headaches, ADHD, oxidative stress, and many other negative conditions. Again, I've brought evidence, um, and there's much more online. There's also evidence that it affects trees, bees, and wildlife. Now more than ever, we need to protect the environment and look carefully at the negative impact we're having on the world around us. 5G is also vulnerable to cyber attack because it's entirely managed by software, leaving the system open to hacking and increasingly serious risk in the current climate. Please Google Cyber Polygon for more information. The radiation frequency can be easily varied for different uses, so the result of hacking may not be just a case of losing phone signals. Some frequencies can be extremely dangerous to human, animal and plant life, depriving the cell of oxygen. Did you know that this technology was developed from microwave weaponry and has recently been used in war situations and in crowd control, causing burns, sickness and serious side effects? The potential for misuse is real. I would like to see 5G infrastructure put on hold, at least while the current climate of international threat and conflict continues, and especially regarding proposals that are close to residential areas and schools. I myself am sensitive to these types of radiation. If this is everywhere, and those who are especially vulnerable to its, its effects. Thank you. If, if, Ma'am, if you could uh, come to a conclusion. Yep. Um, this type of radiation has been defined as a pollutant. Uh, we ban smoking in public places so that people don't have to be exposed to compulsory blanket pollutant. I think it's time that we think more deeply about this new frontier and potential dangers it brings to our doorstep, to our families, I'm and to our local communities. Time, Thank you.